Hey Cruisers, I'm Sherry with Cruise Tips TV. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that we absolutely love it when our subscribers suggest episode topics because they generally end up being our favorite to research and film. And today we're doing just that because one of our wonderful subscribers asked us to tell the cruising world a little bit more about tender boats. So today we're going to tell you what tendering is all about. Tender boats are used when a cruise ship is required to anchor offshore instead of docking. Now the tenders carry passengers from the ship to the shore and back again during port days. As a passenger, you'll be required to proceed to the gangway where you'll pass through a security checkpoint and step right on board your tender. Now, there are two different ways a cruise ship can handle tendering. They can use their own lifeboats or they can use boats provided by the port of entry. We have experienced both types of tender boats and generally speaking, the cruise line lifeboats are much smaller, feel more cramped, ugh, and tend to lack fresh air. We generally prefer it when we have the opportunity to tender on a more open boat provided by the port. So, why did we feel it was worth it to do an entire episode on tendering? Well, let's be honest. People generally aren't that crazy about ports that require tendering. Why, you ask? Well, there are several reasons. Number one, usually tendering means you'll have to wait in line. The cruise line may require that you get a tender ticket before you go ashore, and when your tender number is called, you can then proceed to the gangway to leave the ship. Now, this is not the most carefree process on your cruise vacation, and people tend to get a little grumpy when they have to stand around waiting. Number two, tender boats aren't always that well ventilated and can be hot, uncomfortable, and filled with exhaust. If you're prone to seasickness, these do not make good traveling conditions. Number three, tendering is very weather dependent. Of all the ports we've missed on our dozens of cruises, they were almost always in ports where a ship could not anchor or tender due to high winds or very rocky seas. And we all know that missed ports also make for cranky cruisers. We of course now have a few tips for you on how to improve the tendering experience. First up, do your research. Read your ship's newsletter to find out when you can get a tender ticket and make plans that don't involve standing in a stairwell or gangway while you're waiting for your number to be called. Have breakfast, go back to your stateroom or do some shopping and just try to relax. Remember, you're on vacation. Perhaps most importantly, check to make sure that you have a wristwatch that is set to ship time and find out what time the last tender comes back to the ship. Your cell phone may not display the correct time zone for sure, so trust us on this one. Now once you're unsure and have had a wonderful day exploring your port, we recommend that you don't wait until the last minute to catch the last tender back to your ship. Remember what I said about waiting in line earlier in this episode? The lines to get back on the tender are generally way worse than the lines to get off the ship in the first place. You may be tired and hungry with no shade or protection from the elements. It's also important to check your ship's policy on what items you can and cannot bring back onto the ship. For example, you probably can't bring any type of alcohol or liquor back on board. If you bring these items to the security checkpoint when reporting back to your ship, they're probably going to be confiscated. All right, folks, and that's it for this episode. Leave your tendering tips in the comments below because I know that we haven't covered everything on this topic. Thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Hey, click me to subscribe. And today, we're doing just that because one of our wonderful... <laughs>